What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Fortnite BAR. This blaster is a flywheel-powered, semi-automatic, magazine-fed blaster modeled after something from the video game Fortnite. Let's get into it. Included is the blaster, magazine, darts, and instructions. Four C-type batteries are required and are installed as shown. External overview of the blaster starting up at the front. There's no in-strike barrel lug. This barrel is fixed in place. It is not an in-strike barrel attachment. It cannot be removed from the blaster. Because of that, it is deceivingly lightweight. It's a very lightweight blaster and a very lightweight barrel. Moving back is a vertical grip that is also permanently attached to the blaster. This is not an in-strike attachment. Because of that, it's a very stable vertical grip. It's permanently fixed in there. There's no wobble or shake like normal Nerf attachment foregrips. Moving back over here, we have the battery tray. This blaster takes four C-type batteries, not double A's, which is super weird. And up on the top, we have a fake scope. This is permanently attached to the blaster. It is not a removable attachment. So you can look through the scope, but there are also rails all over this thing. Two rails on top and one on each side. So four rails total on the scope. So, you know, you can get all tactical with it if you really want to. <laughs> Moving down to the firing trigger, this is a semi-auto mechanically operated system. Because of the bullpup configuration, it doesn't feel as silky smooth as the Strife. It reminds me more of the Raven. So it has a slightly tougher trigger pull than most flywheel blasters on the market, but it's perfectly manageable. And underneath the firing trigger is the rev trigger. This is a flywheel power blaster, so of course you want to hold that for a moment before firing. And now down to the grip. Overall, it's pretty manageable, but it's really not that comfortable for a larger hand. But that discomfort is not really in the grip itself. The grip is okay. It's a little small, but it's not that uncomfortable. However, the magazine being right here, this feels more like a thumbhole stock, even though it's not. Because your wrist on your firing hand will constantly bang into the magazine, which is a little annoying. Because of that, I think this blaster will be best suited for smaller, younger nerfers. Back to the magazine. Well, it is in the rear because this is a bullpup configuration. Bullpup just means the rounds are chambered behind the trigger. So a bullpup has the magazine behind the trigger instead of in front like a normal blaster. In the real steel world, the advantage of a bullpup is to increase the barrel length without increasing the overall blaster length or gun length. But this blaster does not use a compression barrel. It's a flywheel powered blaster. So being a bullpup is, is not an advantage in any way at all. To get the magazine out, you strike the magazine release, which is right behind the mag here. This is on the center line, so a right and left-handed shooter can use this blaster equally. Full ambi, bro. So removing the mag is very simple. This is a standard in-strike magazine well, so your other in-strike mags will fit into this blaster. The included magazine is a 10-round banana style mag. Magazine. But this is a standard in-strike top end, so you can put this into your strife or another blaster if you want to. Having the magazine in the back being a bullpup, it's a little bit weird, but once you get used to it, it's totally fine. Just like the Raven, the first time you reload a Raven, it's like, whoa, this is weird, it's not in the right place. But then you do it a few dozen times and it works out just fine. Same with this blaster, it's a little wonky, but after a few reloads, totally cool. Above the magazine well is an access door, you can just pull that back to get in there. Big old access door to clear out jams and malfunctions, I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with this blaster. Back to the stock, this is obviously a fixed in place stock, this is not adjustable or removable. Super Super wonky ergonomics on this blaster, but overall it actually kind of works. That is an external overview of this blaster. Now I'll show you it firing. Operating this blaster went just as expected. It operates just like every other flywheel semi-auto blaster out on the market. I did not experience any jams and malfunctions or any other issues worth mentioning. So overall, pretty normal play experience. To compare this blaster to others, I put it up on my chronograph and with Nerf Elite darts achieved an average velocity of 73 feet per second, which is a hair over, but pretty much right on the 70 FPS Elite par. So it shoots just as hard as most other Nerf blasters on the market right now. However, that's a velocity average. I had some shots down into the 60 range and some over 80 FPS. These flywheels do not seem to be launching darts consistently, so the velocity varies quite a bit. 73 FPS is the average, taken over about 15 darts. So that is the objective information I can provide on this blaster. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, I'm satisfied with the blaster. It does what it sets out to do. The ergonomics are super wonky. I personally prefer the magazine in front of the trigger. I'm not really a huge bullpup fan, because without a compression barrel, there's really no reason to use a bullpup at all. So I won't be using this blaster because I prefer something a little more traditional and classic in its form factor, but there's certainly no objective reason to avoid purchasing this one. It does everything it's supposed to do. Now 
out of the question to buy or not to buy. To competitive nerfers that don't have any interest in Fortnite, I'm really not sure there's a reason for this blaster. I personally prefer the ergonomics of a Raven if you're like a diehard bullpup fan, I would recommend the Raven over this blaster. Because in the long run, I would personally prefer something that's easier to customize. You can't remove this scope, you can't change out the barrel, you can't remove the vertical grip, you can't change the form factor at all. Compared to a Raven, which is kind of like this blaster minus the barrel, you could run it in a smaller form or add a barrel at a different scope and change up the feel and vibe of the Raven with relative ease. This blaster is pretty much locked in, and if you don't like it this way, too bad you can't change it. But if you're a hardcore Fortnite fan and you want a blaster in real life to look like something from the video game, this blaster does everything it sets out to do. It's not exceptional by any means, but it's pretty solid, and there's no reason not to buy this. Another note on firing, the noise out of this blaster is insane. It uses four C batteries instead of double A's, and I think that's a contributing factor, because it just violently vibrates, and it's very loud, and the power output's not greater, so I'm really not sure why they made it louder with bigger, heavier batteries when their performance is not better. It's not like a huge deal, it just sounds like a modified flywheel blaster and it's not shooting fast enough to justify that noise. That might not be a big deal to you, but it's definitely worth noting. But it's a super wonky blaster based on a video game that I don't play, so I personally don't care at all about this blaster. <laughs> So hopefully I've laid out all the information for you to make an educated purchase decision on your own. If you'd like to buy one, I'll put a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review, bros. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay tactical.